So pretty simple. Last time, you're getting this. You're getting this big gun uh, bolted onto your ship, but it takes time. So uh, you decided to take a taxi to um, a slummy um, rock hopper kind of town joint, an asteroid that's been hollowed out by a bunch of indie belters and is controlled by a corporation called LSP. And um, your, one of your contacts, I don't want to call him a friend, Borvai, he gives you a, a contact. He says, hey, if you want a job, if you want to try to make money, I can get you in touch with somebody. I have a lead. And that is where you are right now. Well, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, um, uh, okay. Yeah, we were doing other stuff. I'm going to hop right to the water. water. Check out. Yeah. Okay, but, good. Yeah. And then you, so it'll go like this. This was like the night of, uh, in terms of your standard biological night right now. Um, so just before you're going to end the day, you're going to meet with this person because it was like two hours and you had went down into the downtown area. Uh, this is not like star town Liberty. Um, in fact, I got to put on, let's see, put the twangy music back on because this place is like, first of all, the way that Koenig's rock is set up is they did fusion boring. And then, like, so they, like, slagged a hole down into the, into the ferrite. And the, um, the kind of cauterizing effect of this slag creates the seal. So they, they, like, few, they bore a hole. And at the same time, it kind of creates the seal. And then, generally speaking, you have, like, these uh, walkways. And then like cargo ped cargo ways and pedways, and the walkways and the buildings and the cargo parts have um, uh, gravimetrics. They have uh, plating. So as soon as you step off from your ship, first of all, uh, I think I said in this one you have to um, put your vac suit on and like enter. Like you have to like go out in zero G with your mask on and then you go through a pressurization chamber and then they've, uh, they've got like oxygen circulation and generation stuff in here. And as soon as you enter gravity again, you notice that you probably are like 20 to 50 relative pounds lighter. This is about 0.75 G. Uh, so you feel a little bit, a uh, little unstable, your vestibular it's system. Effective. Paying the, the ship out of pocket. What's say that? It's again? the effect of paying the ship out of pocket. Oh, the the Lady of Mercia. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you can set the gravity in it to what you want, uh, but you know, usually on a planet, you can set it to one G, just like in you know, home homeworld um, from from your worlds. Um, or whatever it is, if it's 1.2 G's or whatever, but yeah, in this. Like, roommates ever have arguments like when roommates are like, should we have the gravity window up. open or yeah. closed, or like turn the G up, turn the G down, like you know, like, thermostat. Where came from. Who touched the G again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Lothar. laughs> The worst thing is Lothak would just like you could tell that she'd feel bad about it and her ears would go back and <laughs> Yeah, but I mean while everybody else is asleep, that's when she goes bounding through the cargo hole. <laughs> <laughs> she she her and her just... and lady. Her and lady together <laughs> having a good time, probably. Um They do hate each other. I'll re I'll, oh. I'll I'll note that again. Yeah, they hate each other. Lady and Lothak do not like each other. Um, so anyways, you're, you're, uh, a little disoriented, a little, 
a little wobbly and a little um, uh, a little light in your step, even on the pedways. Anytime you exit a walkway or a building, uh, or if you go down an alleyway, it becomes microgravity, and you enter a moonwalk. So, um, so that's what's going on here. And the other thing is that the rocks. It's been bore out, so like the rocks have this dark tint where it's been burned. But otherwise, it does look like you're inside an asteroid. And then you have like a bunch of shanty towns that are all like piled up on each other where people have taken corrugated like metals and stuff and just like put it together for their own purposes. Some places are nicer than that, and then sometimes you just have shanties. And then they have decorated it, so you got like bright lights and neon signs and stuff and things that people have made to try to get your attention to, to hawk their wares and sell you stuff. And that's what this whole place looks like. Um, most people here are belters. Um, as I've described before, people that are kind of belters and spacers tend to be lankier, pale skin. Um, and uh, most, of, most of them are human. Okay, so you go in this bar, and um, you see a couple of things as soon as you enter, enter in here. Uh, first of all, the, uh, the, the, the sign for the bar says uh, Rock Rats, and you can actually see where the old sign, uh, where a bunch of old, like, um, fusion-powered lighting has long since scored the back where it used to say what it used to be and it used to be called uh, let's see here won't let me keep my bookmarks okay uh, it used to be called the hole in the wall and, um, anyways, that's been like, that's like, you could just see where it's like dark, where that used to be scored on, on the stone. And then now in like fluorescent type, like bright lighting, it says rock rats. And it says under it, under new management. And, um, there is a, a woman behind the bar. Um, obviously your bartender. Um... Let me find. And she is a um, a woman who's uh, heavy set and uh, has like jagged hair and uh, really utilitarian clothes and a bunch of cyberware. And uh, so, which is the telltale sign that she was a, a frontier war veteran. And she's got uh, uh, a jacket on that says uh, like. Uh, LSI and it's got its logo and um, there's some sort of creature that she keeps on the bar next to her and I don't know how to describe this creature except like its underside is small with small hands and feet and it's looks kind of like a wad of chewing gum that's black but then its mouth it's got like that pug mouth, like pug face mouth, which, where it's just like super wide eyes and like super big wide mouth. She's got some sort of alien pet. And in the center of the bar, uh, a bunch of tables have been put together and there are people in clearly LSI outfits and uniforms. Uh, they have like a two colored jumpsuit and they're all the same. It's obviously the uniform of some LSI mining crew. Um, you note on their uniform that uh, it actually says their ship crew number. It says um, uh, LSP and then it shows uh, MP-17. And they are being very loud and they are you straight up see them pushing people around as you come in one of you like shipley gets pushed out of the way as as one of them's walking by they could Can give, I trip him? you could try to trip him, um, to trip him. 
Let me offer everything, and then you can absolutely trip him. So the last thing is okay. a person sitting by themselves, and it's clear that this is uh, your contact. Um, he is a does not look like a belter. Uh, he's got tattoos on his face, spiked hair, and uh, but he does look gaunt and nervous, and uh, he's wringing his hands. It's obviously your mark. And if you want to trip, wearing like a hood with shadows cast over in the corner. <laughs> of the tavern, in the corner cut, yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> he's doing a terrible job of being the guy in the corner. A terrible not job. Cause any trouble before we have to, before we get a chance to make some money. Before you say that, uh, Shipley, you can make a dex <laughs> roll under your under your dexterity. Okay. Uh, Let's see how it plays so out. Are you going to let him push you around like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll trip you too. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, there. This is the one. I don't know why I'm keeping that. Okay. Did you get under it? Yes. You did? Okay, yeah, that you totally... Oh, okay. I answered back. Cool. That's, okay. It's fine. All right. Yeah, you totally trip him, and uh, he he goes flying and sends uh, sends all his drinks flying out all, all over his companions, and they don't even notice it. And uh, <laughs> they they blame him, and they uh, one of them like drags him up by the collar and starts threatening him, and it causes a little bit of ruckus between them. Nice. Smoothly done, Shipley. <laughs> <laughs> When you get to the, myself. you get to the table, and uh, and he and and this person, his tattoos, he's gaunt. Uh, he says, "Are you all um, are you all um, the the Lady of Mercia crew?" That's us. Uh, yeah, if you're looking for the Lady of Mercia, that's going to be us. Oh, great! Oh, great! So you you brought your ship, right? Uh, no, we walked back at the captain. <laughs> Why do you explain that? <laughs> We're not going to have our ship for a couple weeks. Oh, gods. Uh, all right, so I, I, I think I have a plan. I think I have a plan. Um, the name's Johan. Wait a minute. Uh, Johan. Yeah, I think they call me Lucky Yo. And um, I, I'm a belter. I'm from the Sword World's Confederate. Uh, I'm sorry, the Border World's uh, Confederation. Um, but um, uh, I've been working here with my partner for the past um, a few years. You know, ever since the war, uh, I could see. Looks like you. Ah, yeah, you, you were in the war, huh? Right, right, right. Well, look. Uh, I mean, I mean you no harm, friend. Look, the war's over, right? War's over. Did you uh, cut to the point? What are you so nervous about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. And he pushes a data pad. The data pad is cracked down the screen diagonally, uh, and it and it's frozen. And uh, the data pad is flickering, and it shows an image of a rock. Um, the rock has a strange. Uh, coloration to it. it it looks almost like how an ember would look if it were you know bright white hot um on the inside and then you've got just the and this is as far as a photographic image and then um you do have the option to see the other the the kind of spectral analysis of it so like it, it looks like okay thermal it's hot uh spectral analysis it's got something in it. The rock has got something in it. And he's like, um, so look, um, my friend and I, uh, we got this J Seeker ship, and uh, we, we've been doing pretty well for ourselves out here. And, um, but uh, it's not been going so well just the past few months, you see. I got a little bit behind on my debts. Um, uh, but, um,. <laughs> I laugh. Uh, oh, uh, what is funny about that? Oh, uh, it, it's it's not 
as uncommon a situation as you might expect. Oh, my friend's That's just all. appreciating the concept of uh, creation of value. Oh. <laughs> well, Lucky Yo always pays his debts. That's why they call me Lucky Yo. I, I find the rocks. Man, listen, I find uh, valuable rocks and I, I've, I've found a lot of good claims. Uh, my partner and I, we were about to really make a breakthrough, and then we did. And he points to the data pad, and then we did. Um, so, we got the scanner report, uh, the report, and um, we uh, found this deposit. Radioactives. Right there, and um, maybe a hundred tons worth. Two hundred tons worth. We were set. We could have retired. And uh, so anyways... I was working on uh, planting the um, uh, uh, prospecting uh, beacon to make the claim, right? And so I go out and uh, from the ship and um, uh, something goes wrong. Uh, that's the first thing. Goes wrong with my vac suit. And um, I don't know, uh, but something struck my, my face plate. And, um, and before I could clear uh, the, the beacon, something like exploded. I, I don't know. But um, anyways, my partner, he gets me out and uh, patches the leak. But I'm unconscious. I'm knocked out, okay? Um, and well... Next thing I know, um, I'm drifting away, wake up in the ship, ship's on the fritz, system shutting down, and the reactor's about to blow. So I get my suit back on, I take my partner's mask. He was dead, I promise. I promise he was dead. And I get his mask on, launch myself out into the black, and put out an SOS. Lose the ship. And I lost the, I lost the claim. But you can see it right there. It's there. And so we get it for you? Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I just, um, some of the companies here, they, um, they won't, they won't hear me out. Um, uh, if I could just, if I just had a crew and a ship that I could work with, I'll split the profits, just like with my old partner. Now, he's not around anymore to get it. We go out, stake the claim. Millions of credits. You put out that SOS. Who came and picked you up? Oh, it's a LSP ship. That's most How of the ships, it? though. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, Shipley, did you have something? Uh, I was just going to ask him um, how long he was floating out there before he was picked up. I don't know. My suit, um, well, I wasn't in a good way, you know. Uh, so I got back to the station and uh, turned my suit in. Didn't pick it up. Uh, I'll need another suit, by the way. Um, and, um, uh, a little investment, uh, just to, um, assure, uh, my friend, uh, who has a J-Seeker ship that we could rent. And, um, we'll need to send for mining supplies and scanners. They only have those at Alpha. You're saying there's this opportunity, which is this rock. But in order to profit from it, we're going to have to make an investment in in yourself, buying you a suit, uh, getting a hold of some, what was it, mining supplies or something like that? Well, and I, I mean, yes. Else. Listen, I, I really need the help. My, my The ship payment, uh, I, I, you see, I, I didn't have insurance on it. By the way, out of character, there is an insurance company here. You can do, like, uh, AFLAC and take insurance policies on, like, just about everything. Um, 
I didn't have an insurance policy, and I need to. I need to pay. Um, I, I've lost everything. Look, this this is evidence. I, I just can't get anyone at the company, sir, to to believe me. And I mean, on the tablet, it's true. Uh, that is clearly a um, a spectral and photographic image of a. Um, a rock Perpenate. that that contains radioactive, yeah. Which what is the most your... valuable substance in the game, yeah. What happened to your partner again? I don't know. I like I said, I was knocked out. I it may have been an asteroid shower, uh, some uh, fast-moving rocks, something we didn't detect. Uh, but even then, I don't know how that could have happened. Uh, but uh, something struck. Me, uh, while I was in EVA and uh, struck the ship. He pulled me out, but I was unconscious, and when I woke up, he was dead, and the ship was about to blow. Ross, does the tablet have the location of this cache, or the have coordinates or anything? Or is he keeping that one to himself? Yeah, you pick up the tablet, you look at it, you, you look at him, you look at the tablet, he looks at you, he's like, coordinates are right here. <laughs> I'm not telling anybody where the coordinates is. said all night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, as I said, we won't have a ship for two weeks. I think I can get us a J-Seeker. So what are we then, just miners? Well, um... True. Yeah, I mean, uh, what else are you doing here? Are you not a rock hopper? <laughs> the moment, or whatever we have to be. You, you're talking about millions. That's uh, a big word. Millions. It's probably it was more than a hundred tons. I mean, yeah. And so it, what's the, what proportion are you proposing to share with with uh, your benefactors here? I I think it'd be very fair if you got half of it. Okay, well we'll talk about that uh, on the road, shall we? Oh, he excels like, you know. I mean, I'll look at the rest of them and say, hey, you know, I, what are we here for if not to rock hop, uh, right? I'll, I'll push them a little bit. I'll be like, if, you know, otherwise we could keep ourselves busy. I have a garden that I'm tending to and, you know, Marcello's in like an intramural soccer league. I and haven't stuff. played with the dog in a while. <laughs> he laughs <laughs> nervously. <laughs> yeah. 50% might That's be painful. too small, you know. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm so glad. Thank you, thank you. He like desperately shakes your hands. Uh, look, you, you're not going to regret this. Lucky O's just down on his luck, right? Like, uh, we'll work this claim out, and we'll be rich. It's great. He's speaking really loudly. Uh, you can see a couple sure. of drinks. Yeah, yeah. Quiet, quiet. <laughs> No, that's what Bellamy says to him, not what yeah. Chris is saying to Ross. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> um, I am going to look around the bar, actually, and see if anybody has, like, noticed his exaggerated movements and his raised voice. Yeah, make a uh, intelligence roll under your intelligence. Oh, we're doomed. Uh... <laughs> Nice. Is that that's under your intelligence, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, you can tell that the LSP people, some of them, have noticed that that this group is back here because you're the only other group in the bar, and it's obvious mm -hmm. that you know it's obvious that you're discussing a deal. That that part's obvious. You know. Oh. Okay. So tell us about this ship. I can order the supplies, get the ship ready to go in the dock. I can have everything ready in um, about 48 hours. Well, uh, 24, uh, 32 hours. I got to get supplies, uh, mining, survey equipment, uh, everything I have to get from um, from Alpha Garrison. Uh, I have to order it. Um, 
And then um, I have to... My friend... Oh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm just wondering, what, what do you propose is our upfront investment? Right, right. Uh, not much. Not much for what you'll get, I'm thinking. Let's see. Uh, 35,000 credits. <laughs> You're laughing. Uh, I want to whisper to the captain. I wonder if he can um, maybe buy his supplies and then bring us the receipts to pay him for them. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, worked with contractors mm. before. <laughs> yes, uh, hold, hold, yeah. Um, that's a lot, isn't it? Mm. He agrees to that. He says, I mean, if you, he's like, yes, of, of course. I'll show you everything. Uh, I'll prove it. what the cost is. Uh, it's just at cost. Uh, I'm not interested in some measly 35,000 credits. That's not going to save Lucky O's. That's not going to help me meet my obligations. I need a lot more than that. This is what's necessary to pay a friend to use a ship yes. that I happen to know doesn't have a crew and could be relocated to Koenigs and to get the equipment in from Alpha and ship it in. And rent a vac suit. Let me, uh, let me ask you something. Suppose we go in with you. Suppose we agree to this, agree, uh, this offer. Uh... We go out, we do the job, we make the claim, presumably we mine the ore, or whatever. You have a buyer lined up. You don't have to mine the ore. I thought you were a rock is... hopper. Uh, well, you know, I'm junior rock hopper. <laughs> he looks around, oh, you're not rock hoppers. It's, it's okay. We can work with this. We can work with this. It, it, it'll be okay. All right, look. Oh, your first, your first run. All right, well, <clears throat> the way it works is we'll take uh, uh, an area and find the rock again. Uh, that takes time, but I know the area. Once we identify the rock, according to this information, then uh, someone will need to go EVA in a special suit. It's called, um, let's see, this is page 32. Um, it's called a... Who's our EVA specialist? I'm A buggy. <laughs> a prospector buggy. Uh, it's like a, a, a large, um, a really large uh, e uh, EVA suit. Um, you'll get strapped into it and then you'll take a, um, you'll need to do certain things. Uh, it would be wise if we took an ore sample. That will help uh, reinforce any complications that could arise uh, when we make a claim, a prospecting claim. I see. Uh, you'll take a beacon, um, and um, you, the goal will be to plant an explosive charge and tear a hole down into the rock to place the beacon. Once the beacon is placed, and we have evidence of it in an ore sample, we don't do any mining. We come back and it's ours. Our job is to find. Yeah. You said that you'll be borrowing a boat from your friend for this, right? Just one with no crew? Right, right. And, uh, nobody's gonna be... You know, I already have a pilot lined up for it or anything. We don't have to be working with anyone else. That's... that would be your job. Good. It's the crew. Uh, in fact, uh, it might be best if I do the prospecting part. Um... Does anyone have any experience in, um... Advanced uh, imagery and scanning. I Man, I'm sure Doc Ocean probably does. He's got like everything, right? 
Yeah. Medical scanning counts, right? <laughs> uh, lucky Our like, doc is a real smart guy. He was like, uh, <laughs> we could work with this. We could work with this. It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna keep saying <laughs> that. <laughs> That's his tagline. <laughs> Some of uh, this is us joking around. Like we're not actually entirely incompetent. Uh, the, the way it works, uh, once we find the rock, it takes some time to scan. Uh, we're talking about millions of kilometers of black. Finding a single rock uh, in its signature is not uh, easy. You have to do a signals analysis. Um, and then a spectral analysis, once we uh, zoom in from that signal, um, it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience. You'll have to look at the scanning, look at the imaging. Uh, usually uh, the way a rock hopping crew works is you take watches six hours at a time, four watches a day. And uh, usually, if you're lucky, after a couple of days, you'll find the signal you're looking for. What do you think, Chapman? Shipley? Uh, we don't have anything else lined up. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I don't think our, the investment he's asking is going to make or break our situation at this point. We were, I mean, that's not enough for our payment. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I got a f uh, another question for you. Can't remember his name. What's his name? Uh, luck yo. Lucky Yo. Scott. Lucky yo, lucky yo, yo. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I, I, I don't, I, uh, I, I, I'm wondering, uh, I'm wondering about the territory out here. Uh, the game that you're playing, is it a, is it a competitive game? In other words, once we're out there, will there be other crews maybe vying for this, uh, this opportunity? In other words, are we going to have to fight anybody off? You could make. I want you to make two rolls under your stats: social and intelligence. You do both. Hold on here. Okay, so I'm going to make the first roll under my social. I think that's under my social. Wait, let me look at uh, let, let me look or for my meet, social. Uh, meets or under, you know, at or. My under. social is eight. Nice. So, all right. So my intelligence is ten, and let me roll for that. Interesting. Okay. Um, he uh he squints when you say that. He rubs his temple and he says, uh, uh, "It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Yeah, uh, look." The way it works, yes, 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 you're right. It's competitive here. It's true. Uh, the mining company, the LSP, they take over the large sections of mining. Um, most of the zones that are profitable and uh, prospectors that are independent try to find big finds. That's what I do. Like this one. Um, the find only counts once you turn it in to, um, I wonder if I can find the term for it. It's called a claim limitations broker. You may sell your cargo on returning the expedition, expedition if you have it. Um, unlike claims, a load is, a load is not bid upon. But if you have a claim, claims are not sold to carbonaceous or ice asteroids, only nickel iron or others. Uh, a claim can be sold if it's between a 10 and 1 million ton size. And um, you turn in the claim to a claim market. So um, I don't know if you would, I'll say that you know this. Um, Once you make it back and you officially have like claim documentation 
and the beacon is there, if someone tampers with the beacon and you have the proof and you've already turned it in, they are committing a crime. And they, everyone will, that's sort of like, usually you can't get by with that. You know, that's like piracy. Okay. Um, but right. you have to make it back. I think that's a, is, you would at least know that, I think. Um, you may have already okay. explained this, but does it work anything like uh, in real prospecting, like you get to buy a chunk of land to be able to mine on it to find a claim? Like, is it the whole thing is open season, like anyone finders keepers for whatever they grab first? I think it's close to what you're describing in that basically if an area is not claimed. And that's why if something, that's why indie prospectors go into like wild places uh, to try to find, you know, the big find. That's what indie prospectors do. I just don't want like, a, he, he found a great claim on a big rock that is already technically owned by somebody else right. and then we get caught or something. That's a good point, yeah. All right. Any other questions? Or it sounds like we're doing it. No other questions. Um, he, yeah. he he says, uh, "This is great. This is great." I um, cheers, uh, and he starts drinking. <laughs> now, um, special rules for Koenig's Rock. This is I love this. The Star Town Liberty has special rules. Like you remember when you were there, like all these different things. Koenig's Rock. How does this work? I don't trust that guy as far as I can throw him. He's up to something. Yeah, I guess it just nobody depends on... Out of it, or, like, we want somebody to have him in our sights the whole time we're working with him. I don't want him outside the ship just on his own, messing around yeah. with things. I don't, I don't want to end up like stranded somewhere out in the middle of space. End up like his buddy. Or inside the ship, just on his own. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of messing with ships, um... As you exit uh, for the night, the uh, the Rock Rats bar, um, you can actually hear a vibration in the station, and uh, you can see outside the the airlock from the window that somebody's ship has had an explosive decompression, and uh, slowly in zero G shoots, uh, station f uh, fire rescue and and uh, safety control people start to surround the ship and try to reseal it and uh, evacuate people and stuff like that and uh, you see the wow. uh, the person in, in, at the like the at the airlock that would act as like guards which would be like customs but they don't really do customs they just shrug and then they go back to playing cards and um, there are three things that you can do here in Koenig's Rock and you don't have to do any of them um, but you can um, if there's something you want in particular you don't have to you don't have to like search around okay you can just ask like hey I'm gonna I'm interested in seeing if there's this particular thing here uh, I have a huge list of like stuff and it's very there's all sorts of weird stuff here if it's here I'll just tell you you'll be able to find a map of it and I'll say yeah you want to go to this place and I'll, I'll you know I'll guide you it's a city crawl so as you go I'll describe some of the things you see that's one option second option you can just walk, and I'll describe what you see. Uh, it has its own special encounter rules. Um, third option is to... I don't remember what I was going to say. But obviously, you don't have to go out and look for things. Uh, but, uh, but if there's anything you are looking for, if you want to try to make deals or do stuff here, you can just ask for what you're interested in. And, um, oh, the third thing would be I can propose some things, if, uh, so. I was going to say, last time we already did a little bit of that, if it helps give us a jumping off point. I said I wanted to hit up the pawn shop. I still want to do that. Yeah. Um, Cap and Shipley said that they were going to seek rumors, and I think it's still smart if somebody goes, you know, does that at least once while we're here. Um, and then we brought up a weird food market and going shopping for at the vac suit store to see if they have anything interesting. Hey, who needs a vac suit? Apparently, yep. Well, lucky, you. Lucky, yo. <laughs> lucky yo. Lucky yo needs a vac suit. So, 
I, I made a note that you. Do you guys get a size? I don't know. <laughs> my, I got a note minus thirty five thousand credits. Uh, you can assume that he gets a vac suit to rent a ship. Takes all care of all the equipment, and everything with that. Um, to here. All right, so uh, the first thing was the pawn shop. Um, let me look here. Batman, did you want to go to the pawn shop? I do. What do you want to find at the pawn shop? Or do you want to pawn something? I was going to say, is not the joy of a pawn shop that you don't know what you're going to find? <laughs> so it's simple <laughs> enough. Um, it says, like, Emperor's Pawn. And it's right here. I'm going with Sh with Chapman. Pawn Emperors. Okay, so you go to into the pawn shop. Uh, let me see here. This is also the person working the pawn shop is also clearly a Fifth Frontier War veteran. Uh, it is a dark-skinned female uh, with um, brightly colored dreadlocks and uh, multicolored cybernetic eyes. And uh, you can see that um, they are wearing like, a, what are those types of pants um, that have, they look like khakis, but they're like cut off at the ankles. Can't remember what those are called. Jams? Capri? No. <laughs> Capri's. Yeah. You know. So, you know, uh, yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, and on her muscular thigh is a, uh, a barcode. And, um, and she says, Is she a cyclist? Um, to be on a 0.75G platform, there's something that she does. There's, there's I'm something that she does. Thighs. Yeah. So, um, sorry, did I say thighs? I meant uh, ankles, the oh, bottom God. part, the, the ankle. Why did I oh. say thighs? That's <laughs> okay. weird. Yeah, no, the ankle, which you can see, has a barcode on it. And, um, and anyways, um, she says, take your time. And uh, there is every kind of basic non-military type of item you can imagine in this world in here. And it's actually pretty well organized. I do like fighting with creative weapons. I mean, my net has, I've got a lot of mileage out of it, but there's got to be something else, right? I got toilet plungers. I don't know. Um, I'm in desperate need of some nose hair clippers. I, uh, I think looking for that. You totally, so they have, so all right, first of all, go to the nose hair clipper section. I'm horrified that Marcello would use, would, would buy used uh, so, uh, nose hair clippers. See, right, and, and here. <laughs> Did you grab a, a used toothbrush while you were there? Here's the, here's the deal <laughs> with the nose hair clipper section. Is, um, it's all the whole section. All the range. <laughs> There are, there are three. Wow. <laughs> this is the best <laughs> store I've ever been in. I've never seen such a collection. There, collection. Are, <laughs> there are three options here. Uh, the problem is they do appear to be nose hair clippers, but their, their descriptions are not written in Anglic. And one of, one of them is clearly for aliens so oh boy it's not an anglic it's definitely a nose hair trimmer and if you ask the proprietor she will tell you yeah i'm pretty sure that one of those is a nose hair trimmer but one of them definitely isn't and uh and, well, you, and, know, you, not, and you don't know what yeah, it does so that's that's the trick but but they're very cheap sure. they're 10 credits sure. Okay. I mean, can I try try before I buy? Is that is that a thing here? It, it, even though this is law level zero, opening the case of something and starting to trim your nose hairs is usually frowned upon. 
I'll be fine. I can do that. I won't let them pretend I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's enough. Yeah. Alright, Come on, you've been in the war. <laughs> when, like, you know, when you're in the when you're in the mud, you don't care if somebody's using somebody else's nose hair clipper, do you? All right. So, uh, so yeah, now you, is not the time to be prissy, uh, you, Chapman. On. She says. She says if you if you try those things, you have to clean up whatever happens. <laughs> okay, that is fine. Give me the one. Give me the one that's for alien. Let's give that to me. Right. They're all they are all not lit, written in Anglic, so you're not sure. So I'll I'll, I'll give you three options. Uh, I wish I could scribble here. Okay. Actually, let me just get a scribble pad. Do you think that's like a hipster thing? Like instead of straight razors in the future, there's like alien style grooming stuff. Things made for other species. I have totally no doubt. I have no <laughs> doubt. I have no doubt. <laughs> So, the main difference is one package is larger than the other three. Um, so there's a little bit of a uh, what a uh, Goldilocks situation going on here. Okay, uh, three different packages, but and the main difference, other than the size Ooh. of the packages, is how they would mount. So one of them is handheld. Uh, the other one is uh, something that uses a double bracket. And you would like stick it on something and it, and it, uh, you would like lean into it, you know, and then the other one has quadruple suction cups that you would put on something oh, okay. and then, and then you put your face in it. Yeah. Right. And, and is that one really big as well? Yeah. It's big enough for your face plus face and a half. Oh no. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I don't have more than one face, so. Um, plus, you know, uh, based on my experience, anything that mounts to a wall with suction cups is going to come down to the floor. And something as big as that, it's going to come down even faster. So, definitely not going to buy that one. Uh, you know, I think... I think I'd like to try the smallest one, the handheld one. Seems to make the most sense when you're in a ship. You don't have a ton of All right. space anyway. I yeah. rolled the die. So, you uh, you take the handheld device, and so in this case, it probably looks like a nose hair trimmer, like in our current 21st mm -hmm. century. And you take it, and and you take it, and uh, it clamps into your nostril like this, and all of a sudden you feel like a, <laughs> something shoot out of it. And then it just shuts down and it goes <laughs> and something gets shot into your no into your nostril up into your uh, up in, in, into you. Imagine your cybernetics go completely haywire. Well, I'm I'm trying to catch. I can't speak, and I'm trying to catch Chapman's eye. The the proprietor is like, you're going to pay for that. Oh, I'll do my best to help our fellows. <laughs> All right. So, and you're okay after a while, uh, except something is in you now. Oh, my God. Oh my god. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> meanwhile, uh... Hey. Hey, punch, punch up, lady. <laughs> punch up, lady. I got a name. Do you have an x-ray? Do you have an... Do you, what's your name, by the way? What's your name? You have beautiful eyes, by the way. Thanks. Uh, it's Reza. Reza? Yeah. I love those cybernetic eyes. Uh, do you have an x-ray machine in your pawn shop? Seems like you've got everything. I mean, we've got some some imports uh, for imaging devices, but uh, it's up to you to figure that out. That section's over there. 
and they have um, some various imaging devices. Um, yeah, and I wander it, off that way, and then like you can you can skip to Chapman. Okay. <laughs> There we go. All right, Chapman, what, what did you want to say? We could all say we're together if you want. Like, this, by the way, can be the next day, right? Because you have 32 hours. So you go to the hotel. Hotel stay is whatever it is. I'll look that up later. Um, I will consult with Shipley. Do you think we should raid their whole collection of whatever board games they might have? Second hand? Or like... <laughs> We need to fill I'm, out our band with more equip, uh, instruments. I'm in full support of raiding, but I'm not there. I'm uh, going to get to the other bar to hear rumors. So I can't advise you. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, sure I'm whatever take, you come up with will be wildly entertaining. I'm going to take whatever board games they have. I want to know what they have in the future. I assume probably still Monopoly even at that point, but like maybe yeah. something else has been has caught on in the time between now and then. There's definitely Monopoly. And uh, let me describe the other... Don't forget Settlers of Deneb. Yes, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, you better get the 6 to 8 player expansion and, and you know, um, Settlements and Lords expansion. It's useless without that. It's not even the same game. Um, actually... Probably costs thirty five thousand credits. It's out of print. So there are uh, the 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 board games are uh, and they're totally board games with like you know synthetic fiberboard boxing and um, and you know stuff like that. Uh, there are six of them. Um, one of them is simply called Imperium. Uh, another one is called um, uh, Quadraplanetary. Another one is called uh, the Sky Galleons of Capital. One of them is simply called the Fifth Frontier War. Asteroid. And, um, and Dark Star. I assume Asteroid has an exclamation point at the end. That was Asteroid! That was designed by Gary Gygax. <laughs> Um, how much are these going for? These are all collector's items, and they're all uh, like two and three hundred credits. I'll take it to. Would you say her name was Rise? Raise? Yeah. Uh, Raza. Raza, thank you. Um, and I say that I will take the whole set for 800. Which I know is not going to be the final price, but... Make a charisma check under your charisma. Or, sorry, social. Okay. Uh, uh, equal. Seven. Mm. So, good? At first, she's like, "Why don't you round it up?" And, you, and you're like, "No, look, this this is I. These are all been sitting here, you know." And, and she eventually relents. And so, for 800 credits, uh, you get all six board games. Wow, that's holy crap! What a steal! All right, cool. Um, what was the name of that third one? Sky something. Uh, the Sky Galleons Sky of Galleons. Capital. Thank you. I want to play that one. Galleons. That sounds super uh, adventurous. Yeah, that sounds like some, like, dice-heavy Ameritrash game. Um, Alright. Yeah. I am going to pull one of these out every single hyperspace jump for the rest of this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can I'm do that. I'm throwing away my education. I will no longer be doing my... <laughs> trying to improve my education. It's probably too focused on board games. <laughs> um, and you were talking about uh, weapon stuff, right? Um. Let me look up and see if there's anything weird. So, 
Um. You find a, um, this is a pawn shop, so, uh, you find a, um, a vacuum pouch, uh, for, um, 45 credits that can c contain five medical kits that, uh, it will preserve the medical kits under severe conditions. Um, you find a, um, a magazine accessory for a holster, which, uh, can add, um, um, uh, like four magazines on out on the outside of the holster, which makes the magazines, uh, easy to get to. And they likewise are in such a way that like it would prevent the, am the ammunition from being, uh, damaged. Um, there are large, uh, a, a, a few large, um, flight cases, Imperial Navy style flight cases, which are just surplus. Uh, there are, um, and then you see a couple of backpacks and the rest is just bric-a-brac, like old Imperial Marine drinking canteens and, um, you know, stuff like that. What would I expect with a flight case? A Imperial Navy flight case, if it's still in good order, uh, is a um, vacuum safe um, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear safe case. So nothing's going to hurt it, you know, unless it takes direct damage in some way. I think that does sound nice, but I'm not sure if there's ever been a point in a campaign so far where that would like come in handy. It's just like a rule of thumb. They've been used once, actually. Have they? Yes. <laughs> My notes aren't that thorough, I'm sorry. Uh, you guys were hauling equipment, it might have been the other group, they were hauling equipment up to the high and dry in Imperial Navy, Navy flight cases, and they were able to be oh, dragged yeah. under silt water and without uh, harming the equipment in any way. Very, very um, useful. And there weren't any other accessories for firearms other than the the holster. Um, There's not, but there uh, is a amazing. weapon store. I'm pretty sure if you're interested in like weapons, it's a. Uh, um, yeah, I can make that my next stop after you go around with everybody else. But I think. Yeah, it's a. There's a gun shop. I'll just go. Yeah, I'll just walk away with my board games for now. Okay, uh, and then Bellamy, is there anything anything that you want from the pawn shop? I thought I was with Shipley. Ah, no problem. Okay. All right, let's 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 scan over to you all. But in general, if we've got time, I, I think we, we split up last time before we sort of... You don't I, have I don't to. Have... It, it's whatever you want. You can be together yeah. or separate. It's up to you. All right. We've got our comms. Yeah. So... You guys are busy trying to get rumors when you just hear coming in. Hey, do you guys think I should get Asteroid or Dark Stars? Um, let, let me throw a few things out here. So, like, you can imagine there's, like, what do you call it? Um, I don't know, like one of those mall map style schematics, okay? Uh, you can, a directory. A directory. There is a directory with map where you can, you can find these things. So here's some places you might find a rumor. You could literally find one at the hairstylist, you, whatever you want, but... This is just what kind of leaps out to me. Um, there is a, um, as far as transporting goods, there are purchasing agents that are the purchasing agent offices are the places that deal with free traders for the movement of goods for the five major corporations that operate in, in Bowman. Um, there is a, um, entertainment complex including hollow entertainment uh there is um um a bunch of bars and i can give you like a whole bunch of different options for bars that's where you would usually find rumors is at bars but there's a bunch of there are a couple of particular ones i want to point out here on the directory 
uh, you know, in case you're interested. Um, try to find it here. Um, shipping office. Consultants. So there's a there's a range of offices that offer, um, and this is immediately apparent to you, Bellamy, because you've dealt with types like this before. These are essentially professional grifters. Like these are there are people here that arrange deals and figure out where to go, and kind of guide you by the hand and concierge you in the underworld. Um, there's just a bunch of consultant offices, and then there's. Um, a place called um, uh, well actually consultants are literally that just consultants but then there's a place called a tall catch which is a, a person that is like a professional troubleshooter grifter fixer etc and certainly professional nose thing person for the right price so anyways I just want to throw some options okay. out there well, <clears throat> I'm not, you know, to, to, to get a little meta, I'm not looking to grab any plot hooks right now, uh, because I feel like our, our, uh, our cup runneth over at the moment, um, but, uh, but it might be good to see if we can, I would like to put out feelers just over the course of the afternoon, evening, and see if anyone else has heard about this claim that Lucky Yo is talking about. I mean, it, 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 you know, it, it seems like there's some shadiness. His story about his waking up and finding his friend dead is beyond unlikely. Either he killed his friend or somebody's defending that space. That, that's not the kind of thing that happens randomly and he doesn't know why. So I, I want to actually listen for that specific kind of information. You know, listen out for the name Lucky O. Listen out for people talking about a radioactive claim, or uh, you know, or people popping up. You know, showing up missing, prospectors missing. I don't know. That might be a bit of a stretch, but all right. Um, why don't you pick your skill for that and go ahead and make the skill check for it? Streetwise, I think. Yeah, I would even say you could add your admin to it. It makes sense to me. Um, well, each of those is a one. So, do you mean add plus two or, or just yeah, roll add a plus one? Dice modifier plus two. Alright, well, I'm just going to roll 2d6 and. Oh my god, what a terrible roll. Oh no. That's a, that's a five <laughs> of roll. You know, so I, I'll give you. This takes some time, okay? So, I'm going to move. Part of that is I'm going to take a whole bunch of the day away, and it's going to be late afternoon by the time you figure this out. And one of the things uh, you're asking around, you don't find any inroads with any potential employers from before. That would have like been a dead ringer. Like, all right, we, we know this for sure. Instead, you talk in uh, the um, uh, the um, looking for the bar that's particularly good for this. Uh, the fire in the hole which is a belter bar. Uh, essentially, you go around town and try to figure this out, and you are basically unsuccessful, and by the end of the day, almost, early evening, late afternoon, you find yourself back at the strip, back at the uh, the Rock Rats bar. And yeah. uh, and you, you go to the bar over, uh, which is the, um, the, the fire in the hole, and uh, fire in the hole is a bunch of, a bunch of indie belter rock hoppers from Bowman and um, you finally find a lead where one of the people there is like yeah we know Lucky Yo yeah he's uh, <laughs> I mean if you haven't figured out the joke yet there's a reason we call him Lucky Yo <laughs> okay <laughs> I mean yeah. that guy oh boy but sad to hear about his ship and his friend though they raise a glass you know his, his partner his his, bar, his partner was a was a good man, kept kept Yo going, kept him straight. So, so anyways, you do verify that what happened to him did happen at least. He lost his ship and his friend. And uh, 
Tiff, uh, sorry, yeah. Shipley, what are, what are you doing? Okay, yeah, I want to know more about, um, because, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, look, there's more to this story, and I'm wondering if, since it is radioactive, if there's someone else interested who maybe doesn't want to be found out, um, so I kind of want to know, uh, ask some about, um, visitors, unusual visitors, people passing through, rumors of pirates, um, that sort of thing. Traffic that's not the usual L and uh, corporate corporate stuff or the Belcher work. Um, is your intention in that to try to figure out what might have happened to him, or why are you trying to figure out about unusual traffic? Yeah, my intention is trying to figure out uh, what might have happened to him, and, and if there's anybody here um, who we might be uh, run up against when we're out there. Gotcha. Just you, try and get a better sense of who's out there and who we might be running into later on. Do you have any um, uh, skills related to this? Like carousing or um, yeah, admin or skills. anything like that? I have no communication skills whatsoever. Oh, I have jack of all trades at zero. Uh, um, I can probably use that to do some sort of caddy thing. I agree. Um, so essentially this will allow you to make a... I'm just going to say... A, I, in this case, I'm going to say a regular dice modifier one check. So to get an eight. Okay. I'll just roll two six and add nice. Eight. Oh, you okay, got a nine. nine. Yeah. Okay. So um, something becomes pretty clear pretty soon. You depart from the bars. Maybe you walk around with Bellamy. You're trying to get an eye on what you're talking about while Bellamy's trying to figure out if the story's true. In the process of that, you go down to the, um, um, you find that there are like three or four levels to this asteroid, and um, you go to, let's see, Old Town, and as you go through Old Town, you can see a food markets here, a bunch of food markets that are made by the hydroponics base. A general store for general goods if, and, and things, um, accountants, clothes, but also there's an arbiter's office. And um, as you pass the arbiter's office, you can see groups in there and it's clear that to you that... Um, LSP like runs the show uh, here and that there's factions within LSP so the way the law works here is you pay for the law you got the money you can pay for an attorney and you pay for an arbiter uh, you basically pay for your own judge and jury here like uh, if you pay for it you get it and then it's resolved and then binding um, and uh, so LSP is able to do that and of course they're able to find every single Indy Miner guilty of everything they want. Um, so, you also, as you're walking around in the alleyways, can see that there's graffiti like FLSP. You know, like, so there's an obvious, like, tension here between the independent miners and LSP. And the other thing that you see is nothing else. No, um, no Kafirkanok, no uh, no Imperial, you know, security people, Imperial military. Um, there are some other companies present, but uh, but they don't seem to operate a lot of the like operations, a lot of the guts of how things work. Um, it, Koenig's Rock is dominated by the tension between LSP and the Indies. That's what you find. Okay. So, uh, I think by finding nothing, you have found probably something. You know, like what yeah. you'll find out there, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. So, back to the... Um, back to the... Uh, um, pawn shop. Now, that takes you, you... You establish that pretty soon. 
um, you're able to see that. So I'll get back to you in a minute. Uh, we'll do a couple of rounds of this. Let me do an encounter check here. How long have you been a board gamer, Chapman? <clears throat> um, it was something that I uh, was introduced to when I was in the military, and I often found ways to sneak away from whatever duties I was assigned to, so I could uh, play games instead. And I frequently got punished for this. Bad boy. <laughs> um. So, where do you guys go next? Marcello and uh, Chapman. I'll check out that firearm store since I already brought it up, I guess. Right on, right on. Okay. So, uh... Okay. Um, uh, Marcello, do you want to go with him or do you want to go somewhere else? You could totally go somewhere else. I'll go with him. Okay. I'll go with him for now. Afterwards, we'll go somewhere else. Um, Seems like the GM wants to split the party. No, no, no. I don't have any plans. <laughs> I have no plans. That's why I... Then he's going to have each of us get ambushed and we'll all be about ourselves. <laughs> go and jump. That's teasing. why I can't. We see through your ruse, Ross. You're a classic railroader. There's a plot line in ways. So I, I want to describe kind of... I, I need to make a mark here so I don't lose it. All right, there we go. I'm going to kind of... You guys will travel, but, um, but as you go, uh, you leave the pawn shop, and uh, a belter comes out of a nearby bar. Now, your other friends are gone somewhere else. They're in a different part of town. I didn't want to do this with them because um, you travel too far, so I won't, I won't recap everything that I'm about to show you all. But some, a, a belter comes out of the bar, and they say, Hey, wait a second. You're not from Bowman, are you? Says that to me. No, yeah. just passing through. Nah. <laughs> you wouldn't be out of here unless you were down on your luck or trying to go out to the belt for some reason. Listen, come here. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's yeah. A great tourist destination. We were hitting up the beaches and uh, <laughs> yeah. Spotted. Right. Okay. Look. Um, and he holds up a data pad. He's like, I got something for you. I can't make any money off of this, but you give me 500 credits right now, I'll give it to you. And he flashes it, and it's an octant. And uh, an octant, uh, you know, is like a 3D um, grid, uh, a coordinate in space, which is what miners use to identify where a valuable find is. What, what are we going to find thing? at those coordinates? Salvage. Uh, <laughs> I know, Jal, uh, Chapman. I think we should get, I think we should go. Yes, I left my 500 credits in my other pair of pants, so I'll tell you what. <laughs> You're lost. <laughs> uh, I'll meet you later at the Rock Rats Bar this evening. You lost, traveler. <laughs> he walks off, goes back to the bar. So let's see here. Oh my god, this place is thick with them. This is... <laughs> uh, I like this place. The thing is, that wasn't very different from the actual job we are pursuing. Like, very similar offer. Well, yeah. Rod, it was, yeah, it I know. It was I... to Lucky O's ship. <laughs> the same wreck. <laughs> oh 
my god. Actually, oh, I know where I said you were. Um, so let's see here. Go ahead. Sorry. I wonder if there's a chance that we could we we recognized that 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 isn't the same ship, is it? In coordinates, is it? You saw earlier in the bar. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, that would have been creepy. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, meanwhile, Bellamy, now this is, um, so this is asynchronous, okay? I'm kind of hopping around in different times of the day and different people. Yeah. So, Bellamy sure. and Shipley, you all went off while they were at the pawn shop, and this is before, this is just when you get to the, um, to the uh, arbitrator's office, the arbiter's office, where Shipley, you see all the stuff in the alleyway, and you see what's happening with the belters and with LSP. Um, outside the arbiter's office, you see someone walk out. Oh, I got to do this roll. Okay, right. Um, and they they leave the arbiter's office angry, and uh, they're they're muttering in a language other than Anglic. And um, and they see you. And they see you kind of like snooping in the arbiter's office. Now this is a this is not the rock harper, hoppers, the the belters that you saw weeping, basically as they're having their like livelihood stripped away under an arbiter. This is somebody else that uh, you know you see walk out, and they're also upset. And uh, they say, "Hey, wait a second. Hey, I can see cyberware. You're free traders." What of it, friend? You make money by moving things. You got something in mind? Making money is kind of optimistic, but yes. Let's step down this. Uh, let's step down this alley for a moment. I'm not armed. I he, am. He points. Uh, he points to right here. Great conversation started right there. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> he uh, he says. Um, uh, so as soon as you do that, you start a you kind of lift off the the ground in microgravity, and you kind of float around a little bit. And uh, so he pulls himself along the the rocky walls and different things that are bolted into the walls. Wow. He says, um, listen, a deal that I had made, it didn't go too well for me in that arbiter's office. I've got about a month left. I've got a cargo, and it's labeled as aircraft parts. I'll make you a deal. I will give you these parts half off because they're not doing me any good if they're going to take them away. And what are they? Eh, that's... Just don't open it. Well, if we're going to resell it, kind of need to know who to sell it to. What well, kinds of people might be interested in buying these aircraft parts? I can point you to the right markets for aircraft parts. Got it. <clears throat> and what is half off? Uh, so let's see. Aircraft parts. Yeah, actually, you can go ahead and make your value roll uh, for the uh, for an aircraft part. He's he. Three D six. Yeah. Uh, that? It's a two D six. 
And uh, you can also add your bribery, yes. admin. Well, I would have to add only admin. I don't have bribery. But uh, sadly, the result, once again, is six. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I have to do the math, sir. Okay. <laughs> so th there's good news and bad news. He says 650K. He's lying. Um, aircraft parts run at standard 1 million per ton, so half off would be a half million. So he's trying to mark it up, you know, but uh, he's in a rush, so you will not be selling them as aircraft parts, right? So that's the thing. You're going to be sending it to a market that's going to take whatever's in these boxes with no questions, which means that you're, it's basically a 500k good uh, at 100 and... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 130%. So you would need to either find a broker to ensure a higher resale, or you would need to uh, roll higher than you did. Like, you know, roll like a 8, 9, 10. Well, uh, <clears throat> sounds like not only not worth it, but not possible, even if it was worth it. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's see here. So you tell him no. Yeah. Some other time frame. He walks away without even saying goodbye, exasperated, cursing in some language other than Anglic, as he regains his footing and lights down onto the, the pedway and storms off. And, um, I apologize. Uh, oh, wait, yeah, we're back with Chapman and Bill and, um, Marcello. And you guys are going to go to... The gun store, right? So, that's not very far away, so I'm going to kind of describe things as we go here really quick. Um, Alright, so you're walking back through here. I'll kind of describe some of this stuff. Uh, this right here is a... Um, this is, uh, it says the Koenig Merchants Association, and um, it uh, has one of the nicest structures that you've seen here. It essentially looks like a courthouse. And um, following the, um, following the um, directory, you have to take a lift. When you take the lift, you enter the lift and all of a sudden you enter microgravity. And it has like handholds like a like a subway, but instead of, you know, sideways it goes down. But you hold the handholds and you're in microgravity. So you start to kind of float up and you have to kind of hold on. And uh, and it goes down into a different level. Enter the pedway again and you are um, back in 0.75G. So, um, this a sign says computer network offices and uh, you can see a bunch of library terminals and large computer systems and things like that um, and this is like basically AT&T slash the government telecommunications slash computer slash IT place um, this says the water plant office I guess this is in case you all want to do a siege of this place or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then... Uh, Put that in my back, back pocket. This yeah. says Gervitix Sales and Services. And then there are a bunch of residential areas. And the directory takes you... And you are now in the city called Koenig. Uh, there are about three or four different parts to this asteroid. Um, and you pass some residential areas... There are people out and about today, walking around, shopping, doing their jobs. And uh, you see here that it says, um, let's 
says, uh, uh, Valdis and Gerbach Associates. It's an attorney's office. Well, let's hope we don't need them. And then finally, you get to a place that just says, Guns! And they have guns. They have basically every gun you would want and all kinds of accessories and anything you could imagine, except for military grade items, except for some exceptions I'll mention in a minute, and uh, tech level 9 and less only. What's the vibe of the street right outside the gun shop? Slow, lazy. Uh, outside the gun shop, actually, no one's outside the gun shop. Okay. All right. Uh, they don't like Jeff, and we're there. here. Um, I will lightly browse for a bit before probably just asking uh, an employee for some advice on something, uh, ask for their selection about something I'm looking for. Uh... I want something that works well at melee range. Even a melee weapon would be fine. And that's discreet. I don't need to be always walking around with a sword at my side. <clears throat> um, you know, and something like a stun gun, even, would not be a bad option to have, you know, just in case I, I have a, a conversation that goes poorly. Um. Make a, uh, uh, roll under your social. Sure. Uh, success. Five under seven. Um, the, the proprietor here. We get another spacer here. Is a man. Um, they have, uh, bloodshot eyes. And uh, they wear, like, tactical gear. They've got, like, some obscure brand uh, that's not an Anglic. That's clearly some kind of weapons manufacturer. And black tactical pants that they're wearing. And they've got a, uh, a, um, uh, a data pad at their side where they're, they could take inventory or, you know, ask questions or whatever. And, um, yeah, and uh, he's, like... So you're interested in our special selection. I love all things special. <laughs> After Question. what I've been through, I've seen every I've seen everything conventional, so Question is, can you afford it? Like what kind of what kind of budget is range are we at, talking? Is he looking us up and down and, and looking at our clothes? Is he, <laughs> is, he, is he looking down his nose at us? No, nah, he's probably licking his lips because you're a traveler. So he probably thinks you're rich compared to Space Somalia here. You know, like you're coming into his gun store and he thinks he can fleece you. Want to buy his dad off of us? Um... um... Well, I guess I should probably consult against the actual uh, value of some of the equipment that I have on me to see if any of it is particularly nice. It's the kind of stuff I might be able to uh, trade out or sell. How much do guns often cost and other fancy weapons? Well, are you looking at, like, so a weapon is pretty cheap. It's like 500 credits, but are you looking at, like, 500 credits for a normal weapon? Or are you looking at, like, 50,000 credits for a special weapon? Or are you looking at, like, a half million credits for, like, this thing is the best thing in the game? 
I was mostly curious to just see what there is, even if I can't actually buy it. You know, I like browsing. There's some something fun about looking at the stuff you can't yeah. afford. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, to clarify, he has every weapon in the game that's below tech level 9, um, except for military grade stuff, except he does have automatic rifles auto and automatic pistols. I already got each of those. <laughs> Ask him if he has the gun from Fifth Element. <laughs> Ice cube system. Wow. Man, that thing had so many cool things. I, as a kid, I was just like, I want one of those so bad. 1997. 100%. I was now, like, Dang. Ross, in, in my classic facsimile version of, of Traveler, all the weapons listed in that, it looks to me, are, are the basic ones like we have in our um, our pinned weapons and range matrix uh, document. <clears throat> Which is mostly just like very basic kinds of guns, like types, and then obviously a lot of antique things. Um, yeah, they have all that, and I, I forgot to mention that they also have some things like uh, telescopic sights, um, shoulder stock, folding stock. Yes, and let me see if there's any other tactical gear in the back. But he's he's also kind of like saying, "Hey, I'll I, I'll offer you this thing under the table." But he wants to know that you're in the market to spend some money. No, I guess mm, not at the moment. I'm not. I don't feel financially secure enough to be <laughs> doing that kind of thing. Um, and it looks as though this game does not, at least at at that book's writing, have anything for like a a, a basic melee stun gun kind of thing. Um, which I think actually, like. The earliest, like, commercially available or, like, police-used tasers were probably made in, like, the late 60s, early 70s, so they might have been, like, <laughs> new enough they wouldn't have made their way into the earliest version of Traveler. He's, so he says that as well. He's like, so you're interested in some non-lethal options? Um, yeah, I mean, I always like uh, having that option open of, you know, getting to decide whether or not... <clears throat> And it sounds like this might some... might be something that you want uh, for very close self defense. Is that right? Something discreet. Yeah. yeah. All right. And he pulls out a. Um, he's got some boxes, and uh, you can see faded that uh, in blocky Anglic it says Graham emblazoned on the top of these boxes, and there these are these blocky rugged weapons cases and he uh he pops one of them open it has this like new car smell on the inside it, it you can tell that it hasn't been you know used or sold and um uh and he's like this will go for about six thousand credits and um it is it has the features of a body pistol that does uh what do you call it subdual damage you said how many credits? I think I said 6,000. 6,000. Right. Yeah, let me take a look at our money log. Meanwhile, uh, since you're looking at that, what do you, is there anything you're interested in, uh, Marcello? Pick up some pepper spray. Pepper spray. Uh, let me look here. You know what my ideal would be? Is like a really heavy duty joy buzzer. I could just wear in my palm. You know? Right. Go for the handshake and then knock them out. That would be great. Wow. He, he says, uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't have anything like a spray. Uh, I gotta admit that most things... Uh, people deal with around here they want something more than a spray besides try to spray something in this environment uh, it's all wonky the pressurization when it's transported anyways but you got a point there you, you all might be interested in these and he brings out some um, police riot weapons um, 
and uh, they will stun someone if they fail a save, uh, and they are, I will say, uh, let me find the price here, Three. I will say they are 1,200 credits each. There's two of them. What do they look like? Uh, they look like cow, uh, cattle prods. They look like a rod with an end uh, that's a that's like a um, electrical current conductor at the end. He says. He, he says now if you struck. Uh, yeah. What'd you say? Yeah, that's so. That's one problem. Is uh, a lot of worlds they're kind of finicky about things like this. So uh, this is this is considered. Um, something beyond a um like a submachine gun usually usually world worlds aren't too keen on having these in them uh, you know there are ways to work around that if you ask me and and then the other thing of note is if someone is wearing a vac suit or certain types of armor this won't be effective hmm. yeah like i said it's just not really my style thanks anyway yeah. Oh well. I'm gonna pan back to the other folks, and then if there's something in particular that you all are interested in, you can think about it. Um, let's see here. Okay. Meanwhile, back in Old Town. Um, so now Bellamy, unfortunately, like you spent most of the day. So I'm going to give another turn to um, to Shipley. So Shipley, uh, you find out that you find this graffiti. You have this encounter in the alleyway. You see what's going on in the arbiter's office, and you get a sense of like what you might find out in space, which is mostly independent belters and LSP. That's probably what you're going to find out in space. Um, is there anything else that you want to try to look around for and find? Or find out or yeah actually i was inspired by the not pork rinds to um maybe spruce up our and lothex digestive issues to see, maybe spruce up our our culinary options so i'm gonna kind of look around and see what kinds of foods they have um aside from whatever we've been eating recently frozen lasagna i'm assuming yeah the old town actually does have the food markets so let me see I think what would be like the space equivalent of, you know, an Asian market where you get exotic stuff. Would be like Zadani. Well, the thing is, like, it's like, like it's it's the Zadani are, food market. Yeah, they're, they're, right. The, the thing is, you're going to have what's actually exotic, but then you're going to have the actual stores that people that have ethnic enclaves use, mm -hmm. and then you're going to have the stores that are selling what port, what pretends to be exotic to travelers. <laughs> okay, so here are some protein options that you run into that are like, uh, available out here. They're like authentic burger dog food, but it's not even real burger dog food. <laughs> you, you find uh, tin cans of, uh, and this is exported from Walston. There oh, are no. tin fish. Yeah, and it has you know the symbols of fish on, and there are tin cans of something. And uh, if you want to tr try a sample of it, I do not want to try a sample. Okay. You <laughs> seem to might miss some local for home food. I, I um, imagine this I place does smell gamey. It, it's, yeah. it smells like a food market. So, like, uh, in the tin cans, uh, the fish is crispy and chunky and fermented, and it has the sweet fermented smell, but also a hint of engine oil <laughs> or ship transmission fl or ship uh, hydraulic fluid. It has that special taste. Yeah. Uh, what are their meats? Awesome. There's... There <laughs> <laughs> There's something that looks like beef stew, but it's purple, um, and it's in a spicy kind of cheese. Like, imagine pimento cheese, but then beef chunks in it. And, All right, uh, try some of that. 
You you eat it? I'll try a little bit, yeah. It tastes yeah. like a like a spicy uh, a hot spicy pimento cheese with beef in it. That's what it tastes like. Except the beef is purple. Okay, well I guess I'll get some of that too. Okay, uh, I'm looking if there's any other protein options here. Um, there's something that they claim is a protein, but it's a paste. And they say it's a protein paste. It has a strong pickled smell. Like if you'd popped open a thing of like pickled eggs or pickled bologna or pick, like a pickled product. It has that pickled smell to it. I think uh, I'll pass on the taste. All right. Um, I'm kind of suspicious about that. There is a um, there is a meat with with noodle mix um, here that are in vats, and they will store up the vats and load them up for you if you want to put on you know or stored to put on a ship later or put back you know sent somewhere via cab etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it uh, has it. The, the noodles are blue, and the meat is a sticky meat in the blue noodles, and it smells like a sweet tangy smell to the noodles, like cherry. And then there's like something there's something that wafts up to the top of your nose that you you can't quite place. You'd have to eat it to really figure out what this. If like quality is to it, there's something about it though. I'll bring it the Rio. Uh, uh. And now it's a matter of like, how much food do you want? Is this to supply Lothak and have an alternative food supply, a protein food supply for the dog? Yeah, I want to do some of that, and I also kind of just want some general other options for the ship. But since we don't have our ship right now, I'm not sure how much. Um, if I should actually buy anything now as opposed to waiting. But it's good to know that there's some options to get when we eventually do restock the ship. They can seal it for you and um, um, either send it via... You would have to pay if it's sent via taxi. Uh, I'm not sending a taxi to this pirate secret sword world base. I feel like that would go over <laughs> With a bunch of food. Like Uber Eats. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, I found some cool street foods. I found some good food trucks. So I just wanted to well, send the Uber Eats to your secret pirate base. <laughs> you don't want to try these noodles. You still knock anyway because they want to like meet the space Vikings. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're putting a pin in it for now. But mm. okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh. One more roll, and then we're coming to the end of the day, and then uh, look at next the next day. So this is five, one, okay, five. Um, the same person, now you don't know this, okay, but the same person approaches you all, and he says, oh, travelers, are you looking for some, looking for some goods to move? I've got a good deal for you. So which of us is he talking to? To, to you, both of you, to, um, Marcello and Chapman. He's like, I, I can't hold on to this good deal for long. I've got maybe, I've got maybe two weeks. Just once, I say this out loud, just once I want someone to come up to us off the street and say, I've got a real crap deal for you. <laughs> I'm, I can sit on it forever. <laughs> I could ask anybody, in fact. Most settlements, you have to like search for a deal, and you only get uh, on a D6 of five plus once per week. But this place has it once per hour. I might have it wrong. Maybe it's supposed to be once per day. But either way, it's like. You know, I'm already spoiled. 
Does he have a trustworthy face? No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna um, sarcastically blow him off. Keep going. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm just blow him off. Blow him off. He gets mad. But there's nothing he can do about it. Blow him off harder. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, meanwhile, back at the food markets. Like, I was just going to say, it's kind of like uh, getting off the uh, plane at the airport in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, you're, like, getting out to the, the curb. You just have to pass this gauntlet of, like, people... Sharks and hawks. Your yeah. Face. yeah, trying to get you, oh, you, oh, hey, come to our resort, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's... Yeah. All this, all this. That was, like, uh, makes me think of, like, places like Boracay where it's just like it's you're right it's like a gauntlet like where you're just like pretty aggressive um let's see here uh <laughs> hmm. my first yeah first day in Korea it's quite a day for a young man did you take one of the taxi sharks no, I just walked outside the walls of uh, the camp that I was in, and within 15 minutes, I was being offered uh, unsavory things by a, like a woman in her late middle ages who was standing outside of a door and like ushering me into basically a door that was nothing more than like a ramshackle door frame with a curtain. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't walk. You walk ten feet. People are yelling at you. You almost went into the the blacklist place right out the gate, I, I, right on I, arrival. I, 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 uh, Ajima. Ajima. Anyways, uh, Cuba, Cuba was a, a lot like that. Except a lot of it was, you know, like whatever income they make off of that, they still hold it off to the government, which is kind of funny to me. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, um, let's see here. Um, I'm trying to think of this one. This seems important. Uh, whoops. Um... <clears throat> Shipley uh, when yeah. you leave the food market, someone bumps into you. Uh. And then keeps walking. Have I been pickpocketed? You check your pockets? Yep. You find a small, like a micro data pad, which data pads don't come in micro size. They don't have like, you know, iPad minis or whatever in this world. But um, you find a small, tiny data pad, um, and uh, it says um, Yukon Seeks Summit, and it provides a date and uh, a three-dimensional coordinate. What? When's the date? It's uh, my car for out. I'm looking at where this... We may not be able to make that. Um, Unless we take a taxi. The party, if it means... Meeting it. I think I have this right. Um, it's in two months from now, and it is in the Elixabeth solar system. Holy crap. <laughs> Where is that? Oh, okay, okay then. That's, 
Yeah, that's Play trailing down. several several jumps trailing that's, from here. That's past our our danger zone that we're trying to skip over. You yeah, get two months to get a jump to the ship. Okay. Well, anyway, I guess. Okay. Man, yeah, imagine getting reverse pickpocketed. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, after you see this information, um, it uh, the data pad, you know, it's a typical Mission Impossible thing. Like the thing is going to stop working. Okay. Crap! It explodes. <laughs> um, okay. I wonder if I can fill up the pawn shop. <laughs> after it stops <laughs> working, totally. Do you want to do that? Yes. Make a charisma check. So. Somebody can make this into a keychain or something. Yeah. Seven. A seven? Is that under your or social? God, Lord, why do I keep saying that? That's a, is that under uh, your social? Yeah. Social is plus zero, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. The um uh I'm trying to find what the price of a data pad is. It's like First, a thousand. Oh well, I don't know. They're like, wow, we could totally jailbreak this, and they offer you uh, 2,000 credits for it. You just dox new con in two months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The fate yeah, of the dude. Imperium. How poetic. <laughs> Our gets... guards will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Serves them right. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, meanwhile, back at the uh, port hotel, uh, you guys make it back. Um, time passes. The next day comes, and uh, that evening comes. Now, I'm going to kind of fast forward a little bit because we're running out of time tonight. Eventually, you make it back to the bar in your various journeys, your various wanderings. Well... And uh, <clears throat> by the time uh, that evening of the second day, before so before you go to the hotel, before you go to your room, uh, and you did two hotel stays times two. That night, uh, you find Yo back at the bar, and he's like buying everybody drinks, and he's like, "I've made it this time, you all." And he's drunk. He's like. We got it this time. I'm telling you, I I, I found I found a crew, and would we, you shut? We, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna immediately like I'm gonna storm through everybody and say and say he, he, uh, he, uh, I don't know, Marcello, help me out while I punch this guy. <laughs> so I'm just gonna grab him by the by the by the collar and yank him over to to the dark corner. Here, I got his arm. Okay, you all. No, no, no. You, you, you make it good with the <laughs> folks. You know, keep entertaining them. <laughs> okay. Oh, I just okay, gotta get right. him to shut his mouth. Find out, find <laughs> out how much he said. They already you know, have your crazy. name. They're like, are you Marcello? Oh. <laughs> Yo says that. Right, Yo yeah, says you, he's got a deal with you, you guys. Yeah, I mean, you say you're gonna rewrite the public narrative very loudly. Say, all right, yo, you owe me money. Let's take this outside. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure that nobody here comes away with the impression that we're on good terms with this idiot. And <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna do just that. You can see that there are belters in here that have been hearing this, and there's also a crowd of LSP people and the bartender, and even a few common folk from the streets. So, but you drag him outside. And uh, get him to calm down. He passes out. You drag him back to a corner, I don't know, room, wherever he wherever he can sleep it off. You go to your hotel. Yeah. And um, the next day comes, and sure enough, on the pad is a, uh, is a scout ship, a 200-ton ship, that has been retrofitted with a, uh, a J Seeker Suite. Um, and uh, yo, he's uh, he's clearing his hangover. Off, you know, like he's he's wiping his eyes. He's like, I told you, I told you we'd get the equipment in, and uh, I'd get a ship ready for us. Listen here, you drunken fool! How many people did you tell your plans to last night? Well, what do I? Th I th th 
What are you talking about? I just, I have friends in town. I'm just, a, I'm a friendly guy. Yeah. Oh, Lord. So the answer is everybody. You're not, you're just not a very, you're uptight. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, little... my crew, my crew will tell you that. They could have told you that for free. <laughs> It's because of guys like you that I'm I became a guy like me. I don't know. There's what symmetry, that there's means. symmetry to it all, you know, the universe, the give and take, whatever they call it. I don't know what that means, but uh, that does not sound very nice to me. Um It's not gonna sound very nice when another when when somebody else attacks us out of nowhere because they're trying to get a jump on us. Cause they our claim. They, yeah, because you uh, open your big mouth. But anyway, I guess we'll deal with that when the time comes. Is this ship armed at all? Uh, it is armed. It has two pulse lasers. I'm sorry, a pulse laser and a sandcaster. God. Okay, I was going to say two pulse lasers. Sorry. That's, that's more heavily that's armed than... That's silly. Uh, yeah. I think the scout ch chassis can support only one hard point. Um, I will say that it has one of those uh, dual... Um, yeah, the dual yeah. turrets. Um, well, that's good at least. And it's does it still have um, thrust two? Uh, yeah, it's got thrust two, um, thrust two, jump two. Uh, a, a its sensor package is designed for scanning for asteroids. It's not the military package. Um. Yeah, and then it's got a, uh, a dual turret, pulse laser slash sandcaster, and it can and it has the uh, basic uh, software computer, computer two I think I'll have to look. It's got whatever the scout, the default scout has. Anybody else see a Klaus and a Bellamy? My bad. That'd be weird. He's beside himself with outrage. <laughs> uh, I, I like. I mean, I like the scout vessel. It's a good. We've we've had fun with it before. Yeah. All right. So. I have some very traumatic memories with this kind of boat. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I believe in you. I slide in a Walton tin. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, when you guys recovered the, uh, what was it called? That very first ship uh, for the scout service. The high and dry. Thank you, the high and dry. Did you crash into the lake and have to, you know, rebuild no, it from we, underwater? No, we gent we yeah. gently we gently descended skillfully <laughs> into the lake. We were like true. fully submerged no. and like they, had to find we, we were where totally the hole was in the hole so <laughs> that you could patch it up. It took like an hour to find that hole. Yeah, no, we and then we like did. we were like water basically. Up to our, our ankles and like there was in some rooms the ship was upside down like, yeah <laughs> my uh my impression from what i've heard is we did everything you did only we made it look way cooler as whereas, whereas <laughs> you, yours was like the, the like the fire the firefly version of just like uh you know r just everything yeah, around you is like, rattling and it's just like you know um i've got this i've got this uh it was not the pilot then it was not my piloting goals that failed and proved. <laughs> yeah the um, the time caught up with you guys and you crashed you crashed into the water and had to be bailed out the the other crew um made it faster uh and then also passed the piloting check and used the water on purpose, and they just waited there until it went over the like uh, the flow, like went over them, and then they the pyroclastic flow, and then they just came out of the water and flew back to the starport as heroes. Yeah. Um. Anywho, uh, let's see. So here you are in a J-type seeker ship, and uh, and it smells funny in here. Um. <laughs> <I> bet. <laughs> 
Um, these these ships have a problem where if they're not extremely well maintained, the filters uh, are difficult and the living space is very small. So uh, to have staterooms, uh, if the if the filters aren't thoroughly cleaned, um, you basically get used to a constant body odor smell at all times and really cramped. The cockpit's a lot smaller and everybody's kind of shoulder to shoulder in here. Um, and there's all kinds of crap in your way and there's like wires and stuff hanging out of panels and stuff. You got to move out of your way to get into different areas and things. And, but um, you ask for permission from the Starport Authority for departure and you get it and you're back out in space. Um, and uh, he insists on navigating. Oh boy. Uh, because he doesn't want to reveal, so he he gives an initial coordinate, but he says, "I don't trust. I'm sorry, but uh, especially after everything, all the mean things that you've said, I." Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, and, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna draw Shipley aside into the captain's uh, desk area, and say, uh, um, "You you keep a close eye on everything we're doing, you know." Um, we may have to find this place again. I don't trust this guy. I, I don't know. We just never know. Yeah, can I, uh, from another console, can I see what he's up to or no? And then I want to ask Marcello to do his version of the same thing. Maybe you can, maybe you can cook up a, cook up a, you know, a keystroke, uh, analyzer or something like that. <laughs> I had a similar idea, different direction to that one, actually. Idea. But I think Shipley's question first, maybe. Yeah. So for, uh, yeah, what you were saying, Shipley. Uh, yeah, it's you. He's he's like not succeeding in hiding what he's doing, and you can see him plot a course. Uh, it looks like he. I'm trying to find a ship. Um, Does the ship come equipped with a breathalyzer? Because I'd like him to take a <laughs> test first. <laughs> You know we all he'd know fail he would it. fail. He fails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can probably analyze like the air quality of the of the cockpit cabin right now and just like localize the this sensor. This is the only breathalyzer you need. You <laughs> yeah, can exactly. smell it from this far out. <laughs> yeah, it's coming out the pores as they say. I'm trying to find there we go. I'm trying to find like a little ship I can put somewhere. Yeah. So it's too hard to see other ships. So uh, he plots a course, and it is um, nearby. Um, and let me look at... But anyways, it's the first day, so I'm just going to roll this real fast. Um, who is doing sensors? Is it going to be Marcello, or is it Shipley, or Shipley or Marcello? Who, who do you all want to do sensors right now? Is it Marcello? Who does sensors? Okay. I'm use on navigation, so I guess it's I'm just kind of. It's yeah. usually yeah. it's usually books on sensors, so it would have to be a replacement. Okay. So yeah, Marcello, um, sure. you notice something. Um, you you are talking about like watching and everything, but uh, so Shipley, you're yeah. watching. You know, you're keeping an eye on Yo and his navigate navigation with the flight computer. And uh, how it lines up with, you know, um, the flight path and the piloting from Chapman. Meanwhile, I assume you'd be on sensors just because of the encounters you all have had, uh, Marcello. And Marcello, you detect that within a um, um, I got to kind of flip back between these two. but I still need you to... There we go. You detect a ship, Marcello, uh, at max Oof. max detection range, almost, just within it, uh, about 550,000 kilometers away. 
it is matched V and it is on a similar parallel vector. Uh, everyone, I think that we have a tail. And that's where we'll end the, the adventure the for the night. All right.